Ready, Mateo? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Voltage difference. Uh, what if you got more than one battery? Some of this, I hope, is going to be kind of Captain Obvious. Suppose I connected two 1.5 volt cells in series. What do you think this voltmeter ends up reading? 1.5 volts, 3 volts, or 0 volts? What would make the most sense, Emily? Yep. What if instead of having it this way, what if I spun this top battery around and had it pointing at each other? What do you think the net voltage would be? Yeah, that would be like riding a chairlift up, getting off, getting on another chairlift, and riding it back down to the bottom of the mountain. Your voltage gain has been zero. That's why if you've ever replaced the batteries and it's not working, the first thing you check is, did I put them in in the right way? Right? It says, explain your answer using principles of physics. I'm not going to bother that. I'm, I'm going to say, how many volts will be going through this 10 ohm CD motor? Hello? How many volts will be going through this 10 ohm CD motor? Got to be three volts. Could you tell me how many amps then were flowing through this CD motor? It would be V over R, 0.3 amps. If I knew how many amp hours these batteries had, I could now tell you how long this particular CD would be able to run from these batteries before I need to replace them. So in many portable appliances, CD players, flashlights are the classic one, two or four batteries are used in series in the diagram above. Uh, in series, this increases the total voltage applied to the device. Now, the problem with doing this, though, is now each cell has twice as much or four times as much current running through it. Setting it up this way, because the current is going to be twice as big as before, because current is V over R, instead of going 1.5 divided by 10, it's going to be 3 divided by 10. You're going to bleed both of these batteries twice as fast as normal. They're going to have half their lifespan if they were just running on their own. But you might need that voltage to get your device to run, to get the bulb to glow, to get the CD motor to spin. And so you got no choice. And we want to try and have small tech, so we want to put small batteries in wherever possible. So batteries that are in series, it's fairly obvious. Their voltages just add together. It's not quite so obvious, but if you think about it, it makes sense. You're also going to drain them twice as fast, or if you have four batteries in series, you're going to drain them four times as fast, which explains probably why so many of you, when you were playing with a flashlight as a child, suddenly realized, my flashlight burns out really quickly. Yeah, because it's almost always at least two batteries, sometimes three batteries, or those big mag lights, sometimes four batteries in, in series with each other. You're losing a, lot, using a lot of current. What would be the effect, do you think, of connecting the cells in parallel? In other words, how many volts do you think are going through this resistor? Katie. Katie, you said the answer. Yeah, loud and proud. 1.5 volts. So if you connect them in parallel, you don't gain extra voltage. But the nice thing about this now is each cell is only supplying half the current. These batteries will last twice as long as normal. So the advantage with wiring batteries in parallel, you don't have to replace them as often. The advantage with wiring batteries in series, you can get a higher voltage. You might notice, so for example, my graphing calculator takes four batteries I'm willing to bet these two are wired in series and these two are wired in series. So these two wired in series gives me three volts. It's going to get used twice as fast, though. They're going to dry, run out twice as fast. These two wired in series get me three volts. They're going to run out twice as fast. Oh, but these three volts are wired in parallel. That's going to give me twice the length, and I balance out, and these will just last as long as they last. And that's why you might notice the way certain batteries are oriented as you're putting them in. Often, if they're going every other direction, it's wired in series in two little pairs. Little nerd trivia for you, but some of you might have wondered those things. So far, so good? What about rechargeable batteries? Well, rechargeable batteries, what we actually end up doing is we connect them to another cell or power source, voltage source, that forces current backwards through the cell. 
If I connect a 1.5 volt battery to a 6 volt charger, then first of all, what direction do you think the current will be going through this ammeter? Will the current be going to the right or will the current be going to the left? And your hint is, which way is downhill? Hmm. Evan, how many volts? How high? Same answer. How many volts? How high? Which way is going to be downhill? This is the higher chairlift mountain. The current is going to flow that way. We're pushing current backwards through the rechargeable battery. We're reversing the chemical reaction that was doing work in separating the charges. That chemical reaction reversal is not perfect. There's eventually some deterioration and some loss. But the current would be going to the left through that ammeter. So having said that, what do you think the net voltage that this voltmeter would be reading would be then? I'll give you a hint. Not 6 and not 1.5. 4.5. You gain 6 volts going up the main battery chairlift, main power source, and then you lose 1.5 volts going backwards through the battery. And now you've learned the rule for going backwards through a battery. When you go backwards through a battery, you lose height. It's like sort of you got on the chairlift at the top of the mountain and took it partway down the mountain to get to a different ski hill. And my ski hill analogy starts to break down now because Mateo's going, why wouldn't you just ski down there? Because that's the whole point. I recognize that. My ski hill analogy has carried us a long ways. It's done pretty good, but there are some flaws. Okay. So what would be the net voltage? 4.5 volts. Explain your answer. I think we've done that orally here. So... In terms of my ski hill analogy, cells in series are like a two chairlift ride to the top of the mountain. You get off halfway, hop on another one, get to the top. Cells in parallel, like example two, are like two chairlifts, both of which lead to the, yeah, turn the page, both of which lead to the top of the mountain. Some people can take that chairlift, some people can take that chairlift. You're all going to get to the 1.5 volts at the top of the mountain. Oh, and each chairlift is only covering, uh, taking half the skiers, half the current, so the batteries will last twice as long. By properly, by pro oh, an opposite cells are like one up chairlift followed by one down chairlift. So as long as you label the, the circuit by figuring out which way is downhill, then if you're going from positive to negative, that means lower, current flows downhill from positive to negative, Positive to negative means a downhill loss. If you suddenly end up going backwards through a resistor for some reason, that means you somehow skied up the hill and you gained some voltage. And again, my ski hill analogy breaks down. How? Okay, let's pretend you're using your poles to push yourself up the hill or whatever. Okay? Foxtrot comic there. Example four. Find the voltage difference between points A and and D. And then it says graph the voltage. We're not going to bother graphing it. I keep forgetting to remove that part. But let's find the voltage difference. Okay, step one, label downhill. Only one battery, so downhill is pretty obvious. Step two, try and find total current. Oh, they gave me total current. Hannah, how many amps? How many amps? How many volts? I times R. 0.7 times 1. How many amps? How many volts? Now you can use your calculator if you need to. I times R. I think 28, but double check me. Yes? And by the way, I could also go V times I and find how many watts, V times I and find how many watts. Typically on the test, I'll ask you to find the power loss through a resistor because I know that's the final thing that you'll find. So if you're wondering what your test questions will look like, I'll give you a complicated circuit. I'll solve it myself. Whichever thing you end up finding last, Chantel, that's what the question will be. I'll ask you to find the power in that one and because that'll be the one that you ended up finding last anyways. Little hint. Um, hmm. Oh, how many amps? 
0.7. How many volts? Well, I started with 45. I lost 0.7. I lost 28. This is my final ski hill, and apparently that got me to the bottom of the circuit. How many volts? 16.3. Now, this question said, find the voltage difference between points A and D. So if we hooked up a voltmeter then, you can draw this in, we would attach a wire there. Here's our voltmeter. We would attach the other lead there because we said for a voltmeter, we always wire them in parallel because to measure the height, you have to touch two different areas of the circuit to measure the change in height. Uh, 28.7? Oh, no, 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 no. Gain of 45, loss of 28.7. What's the voltage between point A and point D? And it's weird because I suddenly realized, you know what? It's going to be the same as this leftover voltage here because if I hooked up my voltmeter right there and there, that would also give me the voltage drop between there and there as well. So the correct answer is... The voltage is going to be 16.3 volts. Voltmeters have to be installed in parallel. Ammeters have to be installed in series. If I wanted to get the current, I'd have to wire the ammeter right there or right there or right there. Ammeters, unless you have a fancy smancy one, I'll talk about that a bit later, but most of the time what you actually have to do to measure the current is break the wire, cut the wire, or unclip the wire somewhere, stick the ammeter in the circuit, and wire it into the circuit, and now I know the current. But a voltmeter, you can typically get away with just touching two different areas in parallel. There are really neat ammeters that have come out in the last 10 years that actually measure the current using something called induction, especially if it's alternating current, but that uses some science that you don't know yet. So I'm fibbing a bit. There is a workaround now. I'm not going to bother graphing it. Oh, in the previous example, what's resistor big R? I'll scroll back. You can stay there. Do I know two things? I know four things. Uh, let's see. V equals I times R. How would I get the R by itself? So can you go 16.3 divided by 0.7? How big is the mystery resistor here? 23 point? Repeating or just probably a yucky number, yeah? Okay. This is the one we've been building to, example six. This is far tougher than you'll get on a test, but I want to let you know, for what it's worth, we can handle this. And we can handle this, it turns out, only by skiing without having to go one over R parallel plus one over plus one over. How? How many batteries do you see? Let me zoom in. Better. Chantel, how many batteries do you see in this circuit? What's the biggest one? What's the highest chairlift? You know what? That's definitely downhill. You okay with that? And now I can tell you the current goes that way. Up there. Um, oh, it looks like right at location Y, I have current flowing in from the left-hand side. I have current flowing up. Which way must the current be going right here? Which way must the current be going right here? It's got to be going to the right. Otherwise, there's nowhere for the skiers to go. So I'm going to add that downhill, downhill. And I guess this must be downhill. Step one was labeled downhill. Step two, look for total current. I don't see total current, but I see amps somewhere, so I'm going to flog that amps as much as I can. How many amps right here? How many amps right here? I know two things. How many volts do I lose going through this little 3 ohm resistor?
Okay. Well, there's a whole bunch of ski hills here. I could ski, don't write this down, this one. Then I'm going backwards through a battery, which creeps me out. I'm going to save that for last if I can. I could ski this one. The problem is I start with six volts. I don't know the voltage. I don't know the voltage. I don't even know the resistor. There's also this one. And I think on that one, there's only one mystery voltage. So let's ski this ski run here. How many volts am I starting with, Darwin? I don't know what I lose there, but I lose 1.5 there, and apparently that got me to the bottom. How many volts must I have going through mystery resistor R? Got to be. You okay with that, folks? Hmm. Let's ski another run. Which run would I try now? see it? There is one ski run where if I ski it, there's one missing resistor, but I can get everything else. The outside one, right? See it? If I ski this, ready, Mateo? How many volts? How many volts? Don't know. How many volts? Did that get me to the bottom? How many volts must I lose in this particular resistor? 3.5 volts. Oh, knock, knock. I know two things. How many amps are going through this 3.5 ohm resistor? Conveniently, you can do the math in your head. One amp. Yes? Oh, Mateo, coming back to you. How many amps right here? How many amps right here? How many amps coming up here? How many amps exiting right here? How many amps right here? How many amps right here? Knock, knock. I know two things. What's mystery resistor R? Is that right, folks? I'll go 1.67 ohms. Did we find everything? And by the way, now I can find the power usage, the power usage, the power usage. Oh, I forgot to fill in this I equals and this I equals. There is a little spot right there. So I'll say 1 amp and 1.5 amps. I did circle the directions. Initially, that looked really terrifying, but you know what? Ain't so bad. I didn't even have to bring out the 1 over R parallel. I probably could have, but no need. Okay. You're not going to get one that tough on your test. I don't even know if I'd feel comfortable giving you one like that as the nasty, although maybe multiple choice, but I doubt it. Short lesson today. What's your homework? Because I threw a whole bunch of stuff at you last day, and some of you are still wrestling with questions like number seven. Uh, you can certainly try number two, number three, four is good, five is good, six is good. Number six, it just says the bulbs are identical, and it asks when we close the switch what happens to each of the brightness. First of all, when I'm talking about brightness, which electric concept am I talking about? Power. Power. You can do this algebraically, but I have to be honest, this is where my love for doing things algebraically breaks down. I would make each of these a nice number. I might make each of them 5 ohms or 10 ohms or 20 ohms. Uh, I wouldn't make each of them 17 ohms because when you combine the stuff in parallel, you're going to get really, really yucky numbers. You probably will still get yucky numbers no matter what, but don't be scared because they gave you the voltage. And in fact, if I had just labeled that as V, I would have made that a nice voltage. My go-to is usually 48 because so many numbers go into 48 evenly, and I'd like to see if I can do the math in my head in a pinch if I need to, but whatever. So 6 is good. 7 is good. 
8 is good. 9 is good. Jan is good. And 11 is good. We talked a little bit about recharging batteries. 